The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Part 1, Listening to Problem Solving. Instructions. You will hear a single conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. You will have to choose the best answer to each question. Total time for this task is around five minutes. You will get total eight questions for this task. Hey, remember when we were kids and used to spend hours playing in the park near our homes? Those were the best times of our lives. Absolutely. We would run around, climb trees, and play hide-and-seek until the sun went down. I still remember the laughter and the joy we felt every day. And how can we forget our little adventures? We would build forts out of pillows and bl blankets in the living room, imagining we were exploring unknown lands. Our imaginations had no limits back then. Oh, and the countless bike rides we took around the neighborhood. We would race each other, feeling the wind in our hair and the freedom of being young and carefree. And all those summer days spent at the beach, building sandcastles and splashing in the, wa in the waves. We always returned home with sandy feet and smiles on our faces. Those memories will forever hold a special place in my heart. Our childhood was filled with laughter, innocence, and the purest friendships. I'm grateful for those times and for having you as my lifelong friend. Question 1. In the living room, what did friends build? Question 2. What did the friends do while they were biking? Question 3. Where did the friends spend their summer days? You will hear the second section of the conversation shortly. Those memories are treasures that we'll cherish forever. It's incredible how much we've grown since then. But it's nice to reminisce about the carefree days of our childhood. I couldn't agree more. Life seemed so much simpler back then. We didn't have a care in the world, and our biggest worry was who would get the last piece of candy. I miss that in it. Me too. We were so full of wonder and curiosity. We would spend hours exploring the woods behind our houses, discovering hidden treasures and secret hideouts. And do you remember the silly games we used to make up? We would create our own rules and laugh until our stomachs hurt. Life was one big adventure. It truly was. Our friendship has, stu has stood the test of time. And even though we may be adults now, I'm grateful that we can still look back and share these memories. They remind us of who we were and the bond we've shared since childhood. Absolutely. Those memories will always be a part of us. Here's to many more years of friendship and creating new memories together, no matter where life takes us. Question 4. What do the friends miss about their childhood?
Question 5. What were the friend's biggest worries during their childhood? Question 6. What does the conversation imply about the friend's current relationship? You will hear the third section of the conversation shortly. Cheers to that. Even though we may have different responsibilities and lives now, I'm glad we can still make time for each other and reminisce about the good old days. Me too. It's comforting to know that no matter how much time passes, we can always come back to our shared history and find that sense of familiarity and connection. And as we navigate through the ups and downs of adulthood, it's nice to have someone who understands our roots and knows us so well. Our childhood friendship has laid a strong foundation for the support and love we have for each other today. Absolutely. You've been there for me through thick and thin, and I'm grateful for every memory we've created together. Our friendship is special, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Nor would I. Here's to lifelong friends who bring out the best in each other, and keep the spirit of our childhood alive in our hearts. Cheers to our incredible journey together, and may we continue to create beautiful memories for years to come. Question 7. According to the conversation, what is one advantage of having a childhood friendship? Question 8. What is the central theme of the conversation? Part 2, Listening to a Daily Conversation Instructions. You will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. 
Choose the best answer to each question. Hey Mark, did you start preparing for our presentation on everyday objects? Oh, hey Sarah. Yeah, I've been doing some research and jotting down ideas. How about you? Same here. I've collected information on various objects we can include in our presentation. Have you thought about how we should structure it? I think it would be great to categorize the objects based on their uses or functionality. For example, we could start with objects used for cooking, then move on to those used for communication, and so on. What do you think? That sounds like a good plan. It will make our presentation organized and easy to follow. We can also include some interesting facts about each object to keep the audience engaged. Do you have any specific objects in mind? Absolutely. For the cooking category, we can talk about utensils like knives, pans, and spatulas. Then, for communication, we can mention smartphones, laptops, and maybe even ancient tools like the quill and ink. What other categories do you think we should cover? How about objects related to transportation like bicycles, cars, and airplanes? And we can't forget about everyday objects used for personal grooming, such as toothbrushes, combs, and mirrors. We should also include some visual aids, like pictures or short videos, to make it more interactive. Excellent suggestion, Sarah. Including visuals will definitely enhance our presentation. We should start creating slides or gather images soon. By the way, when is our presentation scheduled? It's in two weeks, so we have enough time to finalize everything. We should also practice speaking confidently and make sure we know all the relevant information about each object. We want to impress our classmates, right? Absolutely. Confidence is key. We can even do a mock presentation to each other and give constructive feedback. It will help us improve and be more prepared for the actual day. That's a great idea, Mark. We can polish our delivery and iron out any issues before the final presentation. Let's set a date for our practice run sometime next week. Sounds like a plan, Sarah. We make a great team. I'm glad we're working together on this project. Me too, Mark. I believe we'll do an amazing job. Let's give it our all and make our presentation on everyday objects memorable. Definitely, Sarah. I'm looking forward to it. Let's make it a presentation to remember. Agreed, Mark. Good luck with your research and see you for our practice session. Thanks, Sarah. Good luck to you, too. See you soon. Question 1. What's the best approach for presenting everyday objects? Question 2. What other category of objects is suggested to be included in the presentation? Question 3. How can the presentation be made more interactive? Question 4. When is the scheduled date for the final presentation? Question 5. What is the suggested way to improve confidence and preparation for the presentation?
Part 3, Listening for Information Instructions. You will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Good morning. I'm Mrs. Anderson, your child's English teacher. How can I assist you today? Good morning, Mrs. Anderson. I'm Mr. Johnson, and I wanted to have a chat about my son's progress in your class. I've noticed he's been struggling with his reading lately. Thank you for reaching out, Mr. Johnson. I'm glad you brought this up. Re reading is an essential skill, and it's important to address any difficulties early on. Can you tell me a bit more about the specific challenges your son is facing? Well, he seems to have trouble comprehending the texts he reads. He often gets stuck on unfamiliar words and loses track of the main ideas. I'm concerned that it might be affecting his overall performance. I appreciate you sharing that with me. Reading comprehension can be a complex skill to develop. We'll definitely work together to support your son. Firstly, I've been implementing various strategies in class to enhance reading comprehension, such as pre-reading activities, guided reading discussions, and using graphic organizers. We can also explore additional techniques to help him outside of the classroom. That sounds promising, Mrs. Anderson. Could you please elaborate on some of these strategies so that I can reinforce them at home? Certainly, Mr. Johnson. Pre-reading activities involve previewing the text, discussing the title, and making predictions based on the, cover, on the cover or chapter headings. It helps activate prior knowledge and build anticipation. Guided reading discussions encourage students to engage with the text actively. Encouraging your son to ask questions while reading and summarizing the main points after each section can reinforce comprehension. Graphic organizers like concept maps boards help visualize the structure and connections within the text. These strategies sound beneficial. I'll try implementing them at home during our reading sessions. Are there any specific resources or recommended books that can aid in improving his comprehension? Absolutely. I can provide you with a list of age-appropriate books that folks that focus on building reading comprehension skills. Additionally, our school library has a wide range of resources available for borrowing. I encourage you to explore both fiction and nonfiction texts to diversify your son's reading experience. That's great. I'll make sure to check out the recommended books and utilize our school library. Besides reading, any other areas where my son might need support in English? Alongside reading, writing, and vocabulary development are crucial components of English language skills. We practice various writing exercises in class, including descriptive essays, persuasive writing, and creative storytelling. Encouraging your son to write at home, son to write at home providing feedback on his writing, and exposing him to a rich vocabulary through conversations and reading can be beneficial. I understand the importance of those skills. I'll create a routine for writing practice and incorporate vocabulary building activities. Lastly, how can we stay in touch to progress and discuss any further concerns? Communication is vital, Mr. Johnson. We can schedule regular parent-teacher conferences or communicate through email. Additionally, I use an online learning platform where I post updates, assignments, and resources. Please feel free to reach out whenever you have questions or need updates on your son's progress. Together, we'll ensure he receives the support he needs. Thank you so much, Mrs. Anderson. I appreciate your dedication and willingness to help my son. I'm confident that with our combined efforts, he will improve his reading comprehension skills. You're welcome, Mr. Johnson. It's my pleasure to assist your son in his educational journey. Let's work together to provide him with the necessary tools and support. Thank you for your proactive involvement. Question 1. What is the parent concerned about? Question 2. Which of the following strategies does Mrs. Anderson mention for enhancing reading ability?
Question 3. What other areas does the teacher mention that may need support in English? Question 4. Which of the following is not mentioned as a strategy used by Mrs. Anderson to enhance reading comprehension in class? Question 5. What resources does Mrs. Anderson suggest for improving reading comprehension at home? Part 4. Listening to a news item. Instructions. You will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop-down menu. In the rapidly evolving world of finance and technology, cryptocurrency and blockchain technology continue to capture the attention and imagination of individuals and institutions alike. Cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others, has emerged as a decentralized form of digital currency that operates on a technology known as blockchain. Blockchain, on the other hand, is a distributed ledger that records transactions across multiple computers ensuring transparency, security, and immutability. One of the key advantages of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology is the elimination of intermediaries, such as banks or payment processors, in financial transactions. By leveraging blockchain's decentralized nature, individuals can directly transact with one another, cutting down on transaction costs and reducing the need for trust in third parties. This feature has the potential to revolutionize various industries, including banking, supply chain management, healthcare, and more. Furthermore, cryptocurrencies have garnered significant attention as an investment asset class. The meteoric rise of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in recent years has attracted both institutional and retail investors seeking high returns. However, it's important to note the currency market is highly volatile and speculative with prices subject to significant fluctuations. As a result, regulatory bodies across the globe have been closely monitoring this emerging market, aiming to strike a balance between consumer protection and fostering innovation. Beyond cryptocurrencies, block blockchain technology is being explored for its potential to transform industries through its immutable and transparent nature. Blockchain has the ability to streamline and secure various processes, such as supply chain management, voting systems, intellectual property rights, and data privacy. Governments, corporations, and startups are actively researching and implementing blockchain solutions to enhance efficiency, reduce fraud, and increase trust in various sectors. However, challenges remain in the widespread adoption of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Scalability energy consumption, regulatory frameworks, and public trust are areas that require further development and refinement. Efforts are underway to address these concerns, such as the development of more scalable blockchain protocols, the exploration of environmentally friendly consensus mechanisms, 
and the establishment of clear regulatory guidelines. Part 5, Listening to a Discussion Instructions, you will listen to a 2 minutes video. Then 8 questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. From Fox 5 News, this is Good Day New York. New York Says Thank You. It's a new documentary that will premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival. It follows New Yorkers whose lives were touched by 9-11 as they travel around the country to help rebuild communities who suffered their own disasters. Take a look. In the middle of a cornfield, a young man from New York stood by a young man from San Diego who stood by a young man from Louisiana who stood by a young lady from Chicago who stood by a young man from Southern Indiana and they were all taking directions from an Amish man on a lift. That's America. That's who we are. Hmm. Well, we have with us this morning the director of the film, Scott Rettberg, and the founder and chairman of New York Says Thank You Foundation, Jeff Parnes. Thank you so much for being here this Thanks morning. Um, I watched the film yesterday, and it is so emotional. I didn't even know 
uh, there was this organization, New York says thank you, and Jeff, it started with you and your son, right? Sure. I, I think we're kind of the best kept secret in New York, and hopefully this movie's going to change it. Um, one of my business partners died in the towers, and I wanted to do something to honor his memory. And it was two years later, my five-year-old son told me he wanted to send his toys to the kids in the California wildfires. So me and two friends drove a truck from 96th and Broadway to San Diego filled with supplies, and we put a big sign on it said, New York says thank you. And it was a way of paying homage to my friend, but I want to make a bigger statement that we would never forget what people did for us in our time of need. Wow, that's a terrific concept. Uh, where can we actually see the film, Scott? Uh, the film is world premiering Thursday night, 9.30 p.m. at the uh, BMCC PAC uh, Theater for Tribeca Film Festival. But also, we, uh, you know, we, the festival asked us to be part of their online, which is a free screening. You can sign up at the Tribeca Film Festival online, and they're airing it nationally. So uh, there's a limited number of seats online, but it's free, so everybody can sign up there and uh, watch. So the movie is about, uh, basically, you go through four young people or men, women, who uh, were touched by 9-11 and now try to pay it forward go around the country helping people That's right. So, Jeff, explain, because this is a very emotional movie. You know, you know every year we do these projects around the 9-11 anniversary, we take New York City firefighters and ground zero construction workers and family members and New York City school kids and other New Yorkers who want to volunteer. But what's humbling is that every year it keeps getting bigger because people from all the small towns around the United States that we've helped on previous anniversaries in 9-11, every year they keep showing up to help the next community as their way to pay it forward. So, you know, what the, what the film portrays is just the, the real heart and soul of America. Of, you know, we went through it here. They went through tornadoes in small towns, and when you all come together, nothing's impossible. You mentioned the California wildfires. What other disasters across the country where, where uh, New York says thank you helped out? Sure. Uh, yeah, they rebuilt a 4-H uh, barn in Greensburg, Kansas, which was one of the largest recorded tornadoes in history. 95% of the town totally devastated all the infrastructure. And, you know, New York firefighters, survivors marching into town. Uh, that's part of the film. Uh, they rebuilt in a small town in Grosbeck, Texas, where the uh, family that they rebuilt for, for four generations, has taken care of, um, you know, disabled veterans uh, on their farm. And 75% uh, of the uh, volunteer fire force from that town is actually that family. Jeff, so. what do you hope people will get take away from this film? <laughs> You know, with the 10th year anniversary of 9-11 coming up, I, I hope they remember the spirit of 9-12. Because that's what this film is really about. It's not about 9-11. It's what it was like when people from small towns, big cities, came to help us. And the best way to celebrate that is by paying it forward and continuing to use that anniversary to volunteer and help others. And we're, we're talking about individuals, not leaders. I mean, quite frankly, there are political leaders across this country who have uh, not done enough for New York, you know, who were not there for the 9-11 health fund and that kind of thing. We're talking about individual people. Ordinary people, That's not right. senators, not governors, but just folks. That's right. I mean, this is a total grassroots organization. It started with a five-year-old, and kids get it. They understand when there's another kid cross-country, how can I help? And so many people around the country have been inspired, you know, by that simple lesson. And that's what this isn't about big, fancy leaders. This is just about people coming together to help each other. Well, Jeff, Scott, thank you so much for being here. New York says thank you. Again, Tribeca. Yeah. Tribeca Film Festival, 930 world premiere Thursday night. Excellent. Congratulations. And tickets are still available on Sunday. Yes. As Beautiful. Well. Thank you. Thank Continued you. success. <laughs> thank you.
Part 6, Listening for Viewpoints. Instructions, you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. The future of remote work holds immense potential and is set to revolutionize job market dynamics. As technology continues to advance at an unprecedented pace, the traditional office setup is gradually being replaced by a more flexible and decentralized work environment. The COVID-19 pandemic served as a catalyst for this transformation, forcing businesses to adapt and embrace remote work on a massive scale. However, this paradigm shift is not merely a temporary response to a crisis, it is an enduring trend that is here to stay. Remote work offers numerous benefits for both employees and employers, including increased productivity, reduced commuting time and costs, and access to a global talent pool. It empowers individuals to achieve a better work-life balance, allowing them to prioritize their personal commitments without sacrificing professional growth. Moreover, remote work fosters diversity and inclusion by eliminating geographical barriers and enabling companies to tap into talent from different regions and backgrounds. This shift in job market dynamics mix also presents unique challenges. Companies need to develop effective strategies for remote team collaboration, communication, and project management. Additionally, employers must prioritize employee well-being and provide adequate support systems to mitigate feelings of isolation and burnout. Furthermore, as remote work becomes more prevalent, the demand for certain skills will evolve. Digital literacy, adaptability, and self-motivation will become increasingly vital for success in this new landscape. The traditional 9-to-5 work structure might become less relevant as flexible schedules and asynchronous work become the norm. On the other hand, some industries that heavily rely on physical presence, such as hospitality and construction, might experience a more gradual transition to remote work. As remote work blurs the boundaries between work and personal life, Establishing clear guidelines and boundaries will be crucial to maintain a healthy work culture.